Welcome to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, brought to you by Pilma. This podcast helps lead lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Here is your legal marketing expert and host, Ken Hardison. Hello, everyone. This is Ken Hardison, and welcome to another episode of Grow Your Law Firm. And today we have the honor and pleasure of having Gary Martin Hayes from Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome, Gary. Dan, great to, to talk with you. Thanks for having me on here. Yeah. Yeah. So Gary is a very successful lawyer out of Atlanta, which is uh, hard to do. Atlanta is a big, big market and it's a very, very saturated market. And he's been down there a long time and he's got a very, very successful practice. He's in one of our masterminds here at Pilma. And I was talking to him at the last mastermind and asked him, would he come on and share some stuff? So he graciously agreed. And like I say, again, I thank you for doing that. So Let's just get right into it. Talk about several things today. One of them is, I hear this all the time, and I know you probably do, is what do you do like when these 800-pound gorillas come in your market, like you know, John Morgan, I mean, where you're at, you got several lawyers there, I know, that are spending millions and millions of dollars, not just a million, millions and millions. You know better than I do, but I, I mean, several, just on TV, not even counting radio, billboards, and everything. I mean, they're probably spending... 10, 20, 30 million dollars a year in that market, I would think. I don't know. Yeah, we have some that are easily spending 700 grand a month, as you said, just on TV. So, yeah, it is the 800 pound gorilla that we've got to deal with. And, and it gets back to the, the fundamentals you've always talked about, Ken. One, thinking from the consumer's perspective, do I need a lawyer? And then, two, why should I hire you? We do a lot of reviews of our intakes to see what resonates with the clients. We're listening in on those. We're doing quality control. The big thing that we look at is what is going to motivate this person to pick up the phone and call us. We do a lot of radio advertising. One of the radio stations actually did a study of uh, people in the market to find out why people would even call a personal injury lawyer. And the number one reason for calling a, a personal injury attorney they were concerned about their medical bills. Number two, they were concerned about whether or not their injuries were permanent. And number three, they wanted to hold the party accountable. So when you're writing your ads, when you're, you're writing your blogs, always think about the consumer. What is it that they are looking for? So address those needs. You need to let them know you're going to be focusing on helping them get their medical bills paid. You're going to get them to doctors that are doing it for all the right reasons. This is not a game. They had their health before. That's what they want when all is said and done. And then when you're attacking this 800-pound gorilla, focus on local. The radio station also asked them, what are the attributes they're looking for in an attorney? The number one attribute was a successful track record. So give them specifics. Give them success stories in your ads. Talk about how you turned a $4,000 offer into a million dollar settlement, which is one of our ads we're running right now. The number two thing they look at when trying to hire an attorney, they're concerned about attorney's fees. A lot of times they don't know that they can hire us on a contingency fee basis. And these clients don't know what contingency even means. Put it in layman's terms. We don't get paid unless we get money for you. We call it our zero fee guarantee. We tell them, you do not pay a penny unless we're successful. And you got to prove you're compassionate. Again, you're local, you're in the community, you care about the community, you give a flying rat's ass about what's happening here. Now, the number 10 reason that they talked about for hiring an attorney, it was because the law firm was the biggest in the city. And that's, you know, some of these groups out of Orlando are talking about, hey, bigger's better, size matters. Not from the consumer's perspective. They're not worried about that. So we attack it by telling these people, when you're looking for an attorney, take the phone challenge. See if you can get that lawyer on the TV ad, you hear on the, the radio station, you see on the billboard, see if you can get them on the phone. Chances are that person doesn't even live where you are, or they don't even have a license to practice law in your area. You are local. You are the local answer for them that can deal with their problems. That's great, man. That is great. That, I love that. I love that. 
And so, yeah, I think you, you've you hit the nail on the head. And I love the fact that you're saying get them on the phone, do the te- phone test. That's a new one for me. I like that. That's that's a golden nugget here today. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm glad to do it. And I'm serious about that. We we cannot get into the trap as personal injury attorneys of sign up the client to and say, call me when you're through treating. That's not the way it works. Not only from making sure you bill the claim, you medically manage the claim, but you're marketing to that client. Whenever we sign up a case, I tell the clients, I want you physically to come into my office and put your feet under the same table with me so we can talk about your case. It's that important to us, and hopefully it's that important to you. You've had your life turned upside down. We're going to walk you through it. When I was growing up, my parents would not let me or my siblings stay at another family's house unless my parents put their feet under the same table with those parents to see what they were about, to, to see if they wanted to, to let us spend the night over there. Well, I tell the clients the same thing. We want to put our feet under the same table with you so you get to see what we're about. We get to tell you not only what we've done, but we can map out where we need to go. And it helps us see you know, a lot of things about this client. If they're serious enough about coming in to spend time with me, then we know they're going to be serious in the event we have to litigate the claim. You can also find out so much when you're sitting across from the table with that person. They're willing to share more with you in person and on the phone. And it's difficult, too, if you're you're meeting with someone, if there's a problem down the road, they're not going to get as angry with you or their staff or our staff when they know that you care when they can sense that from you, sitting across the table from you. So I encourage people, treat it as an opportunity to market your firm. Get that person in and and talk with them. Yeah, and I think that helps you too, Gary. And I think you'll agree with me. It helps you on on driving up the value of the case because if you're just doing a call every 30 days or your staff is or something, you're going to miss some stuff. You know what I'm saying? You really are. You might catch something that, you know, they hadn't even thought about or nobody's even thought about. Like TBI, I remember one of the meetings, one of the first meetings you came to, you were telling me that y'all really, really look for traumatic brain injuries. You know, not the massive ones, but the moderate ones or the mild ones. And that's a big value driver. I mean, you know, and the deal is it's something that's that needs to be compensated for. Can you it talk really about does. Yeah, and I, I can't. I've been doing this for, for 35 years and I started out, doing insurance defense for it, I switched over. And sadly, so many times throughout my career, we treated, because doctors treated TBIs as, by the way, injuries. You have a herniated disc, you have a cervical strain, sprain, and by the way, you have a a concussion, a TBI. They would deal with the physical injuries, but nobody was really addressing the traumatic brain injuries. And we are inundated in the personal injury arena by all these new outside entities coming in saying, hey, we've got the latest, greatest test to, to help assess a TBI. And, you know, it's $20,000, $30,000. Well, how can you use that service and benefit your client if you're working in a state that only has fifteen dollars to $25,000 in coverage? You can't right. do it. But that client is still hurt and they need somebody to assess that. So one of the biggest value drivers that we've used in the last couple of years is a company called Brain Cushion, started by doctors with experience in the personal injury arena, as well as attorneys within the personal injury arena. They're not out there cannibalizing the settlement. They're not charging the twenty dollars to $30,000 for this. And you know, I want people to understand these TBIs are significant injuries. These are far greater problems down the road than the herniated disc. You got one brain, one computer, and if that's messed up, you're screwed up for life. There's a VA study, 350,000 veterans over a 13-year period. They found that the brave men and women out there serving our country who had a mild traumatic brain injury without a loss of consciousness had twice the risk of dementia. Twice the risk. So even a mild TBI without loss of consciousness you have twice the risk of dementia over someone that didn't have it. And the general public understands this. I mean, the NFL has helped educate our juries about traumatic brain injuries. As you said, Ken, bring them in for that office conference because you can talk to them. Have them bring in a family member if they suspect there's a TBI to talk about how that person has changed. Don't rely on the emergency room to diagnose it. 53% of the time, they miss 
the TBI in the emergency room. So this is a good opportunity for you to see if they're slurring their speech, if they talk about the headaches, ask them, was there airbag deployment? Was this a high speed wreck? Look at the factors that may lead you to think there's a TBI and then get them to brain cushion. Again, it's braincussion.com. They will use the impact concussion test. It's what the NFL uses. NASCAR, Major League Baseball, 800 colleges and universities. Once they take that test, they have a telehealth appointment with a neuropsychologist, not a neurologist who deals with the structure of the brain, but a neuropsychologist who deals with the function of the brain. And then they'll have a telehealth appointment with that patient. The last thing you want is a TBI client out there driving around. And then they will issue a report within 48 to 72 hours, and it's under three grand. So what a tremendous opportunity to have your client assessed. And then that doctor is going to give them a treatment plan or may refer them out for additional testing. But then you know you've got a serious problem that you can work with. If the limits justify it, you can do even more treatment, vestibular therapy, if that's recommended. 18 months down the road, you can do the DTI if you need to, to show the shrinkage in the brain. But this is a great, I equate it to like an MRI of the brain. You get the quick understanding of what the problems are. And if they don't pay with a fifteen dollars or $25,000 policy, if you send them the time limit demand, you've got them set up for bad faith, big time. And we've done that. And it's a tremendous way to help the patient, help the case. And and we look at not only the the amount of the recovery, but the speed at which we can get the recovery. And this certainly brings that that settlement into range a lot quicker than than it has in years past. Yeah, I know. know, And and I think the public... (laughs) A lot of them, they want it. They want it. They want their money. And they want it fast. I mean, you see a lot of lawyers advertising that. I call it speed and greed commercials. Yeah. You know, you see a lot of lawyers. That's their big deal. We'll get you the money you deserve fast. You know, you yeah. see that all the time. So it, it must resonate. And and that's to the detriment of the client when they're doing that. Yeah, and we're not big on that. You know, to the questions I'm often asked at the very beginning: How long is this going to take? And what is my case worth? I tell them, I have no idea how long it takes is really dependent upon you and your doctors. We want to know you're well. You had your health before. That's what we want when all's said and done. I get calls all the time from people that either tried to handle the case on their own or they hired an attorney that was just focused on the money and they thought they were going to get better. But three months, six months down the road, I thought I was going to get better turns into, uh uh-oh, I'm not better. What can I do? Well, at that point, there's nothing that can be done. So they get that, and they appreciate the fact that you're concerned about their well-being. Yeah, I think it goes back to what you're saying, Gary. When they really know that you really sincerely care, it ain't just about the money. You care about them and their health and their well-being and their family. That makes a big difference. I really think it does. Yeah, it was uh, Teddy Roosevelt that said, they don't care how much they know until they know how much you care. There you go. And we lose sight of that, and we can't. It, it, don't turn your practice into a personal injury mill. Turn it into an opportunity where you can help these people through some very dark times. The money's going to come if you do it for the right reasons. Yeah, I agree. I'm sure that this is uh, just that one thing ought to be these lawyers that listen, you need, you need to do this because I'm telling you, it's doing right by the client. It's driving the value up. And like you say, I mean, there is sometimes when they're only 25000 or fifteen, but there's also a lot of times these people got underinsured or a, a, a transfer truck or a commercial vehicle, and, and that's that's very, very important, I think. And, Ken, that's a great point. When you get them in, and we call them a legal strategy session, don't just call it an office conference. It's a meeting with a purpose. We're, to get, again, talking about what not only has happened, but where we need to go so they have an understanding of that. But that's a great time to educate them on, look, you don't have uninsured motorists. You need to talk to your agent and get this added right away, because if you did, we could have gotten you more money. And sadly, there's so many people out there driving around without insurance or not enough insurance. This is a great time to protect yourself. They appreciate that when you spend the time to review their deck pages with them. They have no idea. And this is one of the areas that the insurance agents are not doing a proper service to their people by helping educate them on the why yeah. behind each one of these policies. Yeah, I was looking at, I was looking on LinkedIn today and this lawyer, I can't remember who it was, showed this big picture of this car, it was total, man. It, I don't know how the person survived. And they said, you know, we all think you get these kind of cases, you know, there's a big payday. He said, problem in this case is, the person that hit them didn't have insurance and they didn't have any other insurance. So, you know, they get whatever the, the minimum limit of, I guess it was 25,000 
uninsured, which is nothing. I mean, you know, this person was in the hospital, you know, intensive I see all that stuff. So yeah, I think the more we can educate them, the a lot better. I mean, I think I know like with NAML, National Academy of Motorcycle Injury Lawyers, we push that we offer free audits and just show me your deck page and I can and I'll tell you because I mean I'm not doing it for money. I'm just gonna try to help you. So if you do get in a wreck, you know, you got the proper coverage. And the people appreciate that. Because they'll, they'll say, well, nobody told me about it. I didn't know, you know. I don't know what I don't know. And I can tell you it works. This has been 25 years ago, Gary. I did this for a woman. I was doing these classes for motorcycle safety. And I looked at everybody. I told them to bring their deck sheet before we had everything electronic. And I said, you don't have me uninsured. And so she went and got half a million dollars uninsured. uninsured. And this 30 days later, her husband called me. She was in the hospital, had got hit on her motorcycle. Oh, and the first thing she told him was call me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I popped that 500 very easily because, I mean, she her bills were, you know, she messed up. But yeah. I didn't charge the full fee because it was just really putting in the initial, all the, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollar bill and, and a letter. I mean, it's all, you know, and I had to search for other insurance and stuff like that. But And what know. a great way to, to market your firm by shooting these videos. I call them edutainment videos. You're educating the viewer and you're entertaining them at the same time, letting them know this is stuff you need. We put out more videos on our website, I think, than any other firm in Georgia with that sole purpose in mind. We're not trying to, to hey, call me now. We're saying, look, these are things that I really want you to consider. God forbid if it were to happen to you or a family member, you need to know this and you need to take these steps to protect yourself and your family. And so many people watch those and say, hey, thanks thanks for sharing. And you're right, it does come back because you're doing it for the right reasons. Yeah, and I, it goes to something else. What am I saying is that uh, people hire lawyers they know, like, and trust. And when you do these videos, Gary, well, what's not to like about somebody that's doing something to help you, right? Educate yeah. you, you yeah. know, and then they get to know you because you're on the videos and they like it, you know, and they trust you, like you, know you. So I think it's a great, I mean, it's a long play for sure, but the deal is, even if you don't get the case, you've done some good work. You know what I'm saying? And we got such That's a bad rap. About. Yeah. We got a bad rap for BMP Allard. I mean, we're right up there with the used car sales, but I mean, you know. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You know, anything that we can do to, to help improve our community, that's what we should be doing. So I don't want to get into the weeds, but I mean, you do a lot of different things for marketing. I mean, you, you, you're on the radio, you do TV too, right? We do. Yeah. We're, we're big time in TV. Yeah, I've been on the, the Atlanta station since 1993. Yeah, that's a long time. Yes, it is. Yeah, I'm an old fart, Ken. Yeah, but I'm not as old as I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when, whenever we do any kind of ad, be it TV, radio, billboard, or, or any kind of blog post, I always ask my team, when we get together, my marketing team, we ask Wagasa. And I think I tell you the story at one of our mastermind groups. The San Diego Zoo was adding a monorail system to their uh, safari area. And they asked the community, help come in and, and name this new monorail system. And the committee chose the name Wagasa because it sounded African. But Wagasa stands for who gives a shit anyway. <laughs> and, and that's the question we ask. You know, if we put this out, put this ad out, Wagasa, is anybody really going to give a shit? Is it going to resonate and why? Does it serve a purpose? Does it educate? Does it inform? Is it going to make the phone ring? Those are questions I think everybody needs to ask before you do any kind of postcard, mailing, yellow page ad, or not yellow page, but billboard, TV, internet ad, AdWords, whatever you do, let that be your guiding principle. Is it going to matter? If not, don't waste your time or money. Yeah. What would you tell, I get this question all the time, Gary, I'm going to start asking this question on my guests. If you were a lawyer to start now, what would be like the top three or four things you would tell a young guy that wants to get in PI practice to do? And he's, you know, he's got a limited budget. You know, he's yeah. not going to be able to go. He's not going to be able to go on TV. He's not going to be able to go on radio. You know, he's just ain't going to have the money. I'd get involved in a lot of community organizations. I would speak at any community event where you can educate the public, get those business cards out. Again, edutainment. Put videos. Everybody's got a cell phone now. There's a camera on there. It's so quick and easy for you to take these videos, put them on social media. That doesn't cost anything. Get you some followers out there and spread the word that way. Not a fan of TikTok, but I do like Facebook and Instagram for doing that. 
You can get a wide reach of people very, very cheaply just using your, your iPhone to take your videos. I would start there. Reach out to the doctors in your area. Let them know, hey, I'm here to help. If you've got somebody that doesn't have a lawyer, I will come and meet with them. What you do have, if you don't have clients, you've got time on your hands. And write a book. Write a book on the subject. I know you've done that. What a great way to get you instant credibility. I've, I've written 17. Uh, so many on George's subjects. And people come up to you and, and say, my God, I, I'd love to write a book. I just don't have the time. Well, hell, I didn't have the time. But I got my butt up at 5.30 in the morning. I wrote three pages a day. And after you know six, seven weeks, I had 150 pages. I had a book. And you can self-publish so easily now on Amazon. And you become the authority figure just by putting that out there. You can turn it into a PDF and email it to prospective clients, mail it to doctors. You're solving problems for folks. And you become the instant uh, expert in that arena. A book, there's so many ways to market a practice. You know, I used to put them out in, doc I got, not every doctor, but 50% of doc I put them out in their offices, you know. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you mind? But they're sitting out here to help, you know. They, people like to read stuff while they're waiting in the waiting room. And it, it was very effective. We give them to clients to say, hey, when you see somebody that's been in a wreck, give them this book and say, this is Laurie I used. Well, that's a good icebreaker, right? You know, I used to do festivals. I put them out there and give them away at festivals, you know. I have put up a little booth. I've heard people do it in at flea markets, pay $10 for a flea market and sit out there and get a couple of cases. I mean, you just, there's so many guerrilla marketing ways to do it. It don't cost a lot of money because these books don't cost a lot. You can they print don't. them for two or three bucks a piece. And you can I mean, turn this in, into a PDF that you can text to the client and talk about if you've got time in your hand, if somebody calls you for a divorce claim and you're not a divorce lawyer, you don't want to ever be one, at least spend the time telling them, look, I'm an expert in personal injury. I'm going to connect you to a person that I know specializes in divorce law, but I'm also going to text you a copy of the book that I wrote on personal injury claims. There's a chapter in there on the proper insurance that you should purchase. Share this with your family members. You know, I'm happy to, to send them a free copy. Again, they thank you for your time. They know that, hey, if I'm ever in a car wreck, I'm going to call this guy because he's the expert. And I, I'll go one step further. I'll tell people, look, if you got any kind of legal problem, you call me. As I'm the expert in wrongful death, personal injury, I'm going to find the expert in the area that you need. It takes five minutes max, but they're going to be extremely appreciative of you and say, hey, you know, one thing you can do if you don't mind, you don't owe me a thing, just go on uh, Facebook or Google, leave me a rating. I'd appreciate that. And that's going to help you tremendously when you build up your ratings. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I'm like you, and I had used to argue with lawyers. I, I don't have time to deal with that. But I think, I think you, you make time when you're trying to market, you know, you got to market your practices everywhere. You can't just do it by throwing money at it. And uh, on my newsletter, man, I used to put this thing as I said, I'd put a little block in there that says, we want to be your uh, legal, uh, basically, we want to be your personal lawyer. We can't handle the case. We'll get you somebody that's, that's an expert that can handle it. You know, we want to be your, your legal advisor. That's what I said. Right. I said, if you got a problem or family got a problem, call it. If we can't help you, we'll find somebody that can. Because what I found over the years is, and I've heard this, it hadn't happened to me that I know of, uh, probably has, before I started doing that. But I heard of a lawyer that his person asked the phone and I said, well, I got a, you know, I got an asbestos case. Well, we don't do that. We just do personal injury cases. You know, you about need to call the state bar. You know, so the deal is, I, I just want, you know, I don't want, and then I've had some people that I see them and we handled a worker's comp and then they got in a bad car wreck and then they said, well, you know, I see them and, well, I, I just thought you did workers' comp. I don't want them guessing. What I'm saying, I just want them to call. I want to be their personal legal advisor, and then we'll figure it out because I think that's a lot better way. And, and I, the other thing, the, the flip side of this thing is, Gary, is if you're sending all these domestic lawyers and estate lawyers and criminal lawyers' cases, over a period of time, if they know you're doing it, there'll be some reciprocity there. They're going to send you cases too, I would think. I know I got cases that way. It, Not it a lot, but I got stuff. You know. One area, you know, I'm looking at a stack of cards I'm taking home tonight. Thank you cards that I'm, I'm writing to people for referring us cases, writing clients. Thank you for trusting us with your case. That's a lost art. And it takes, you know, two minutes per card, but it means so much to that recipient. They're getting a physical thank you card and, and they know you took the time to handwrite it. And that means so much to them. And it means so much to our clients. 
when, when we give them that. I, I want every time they come into contact with us, it's a feel-good moment. When they come in, I want to give them a gift. And, and I always stress to them, I, I tell them, if you're going to sign on with my client, with me as a client of my law firm, I only have one rule. But you got to promise me you're going to abide by this rule. If you don't, we're not the firm for you. You got to promise me. If you ever have a question, a worry, a concern, you got to promise me you're going to call us. And they're like, yeah, okay, I'll do that. And that firmly cements that relationship where they're going to pick up the phone. And a lot of times, once you tell them that, they're not. They know you got them. Yeah. You got their back. Because you can't, but, you know, I always tell people I can't fix it if I don't, you know, if I don't yeah. know what's going on. I think it's a great opportunity. I've had it a lot of times over the years. I've taken a bad situation and turned it into actually a stronger relationship. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, you fix it, you you know, instead of just throwing it off on the side, you actually get in there and and then they they might call you a little pissed, but by the time you get through with everything, hell, they're, they're even stronger relationship. I mean, you know. That's a great point, Ken. Yeah, telling them, look, you took enough time to call me and share with me this problem. I can't thank you enough. So many people nowadays just say, screw you, I'm gone, and they leave a bad review. You said, no, I, I respect you enough to say, hey, I want to tell you there's a problem in hopes that we would fix it. We're going to fix it. So thank you for letting me know that. And you're right. Then you have a tremendous relationship with that yeah. person. I call it turning lemons into lemonade. I mean, you know, you can do it. And you should do it. You should do it. If your reputation matters to you, again, we can't please all the people all the time. Somebody's going to have an issue that's of their own creation and they're never going to see it the right way, but at least make that effort and you're going to be far better for it. I want to go to another subject. What do you see the future? You know, I hear other people all the time talk about, well, we got these self-driving cars and this and that, and, you know, car wrecks are going to be over with in another five years. I mean, what, what's your take on that? I think we're so many years off before those self-driving cars can make that decision. There's a cow on the road and there's a baby in a car seat in the road. Which one do I hit? It's always going to be something they can't fix. There are always going to be problems. There are going to be product liability issues. There are always going to be workers' compensation claims out there. The one thing I'd recommend to people, diversify. Make sure you're, you're doing something else within the personal injury arena. Be known as the bicycle lawyer. Be known as the motorcycle lawyer, Ken, with your mastermind group. And that's the final point I would suggest. Anybody just starting out, get into a mastermind group. You gain so much knowledge by the collective wisdom in there. And don't be afraid to say, I don't know. Too many times people act like they, they do know. One of my favorite Bible verses is Proverbs 13, walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffers harm. That's a mandate. It's an affirmative statement. Walk with those people that know what they're doing. We're, we're not made to do life alone. We're not made to, to practice law alone. Our job is stressful enough. Lord knows, you know, highest instance of divorce and suicide. But there's no shame in asking for help and, and bouncing ideas off people. And, and two, be careful who you spend time with. If you're not around people that are helping you build your practice and build you up and trust in you and are affirming you, then, then it's difficult. It's difficult to do this with any sense of enjoyment. And that's what it should be about. Yeah, I appreciate that. I really believe that. I know masterminds. I've been doing masterminds, been in them, not just for law, but other entrepreneurs for 25 years and I can tell you you don't know what you don't know and sometimes they'll come up with something that inspires me into something else you know what I'm saying I say I like what they're saying but I would even do this on top of that yeah I'm stretching a little further and come up with some great ideas over the years of, of marketing and management I mean you know just like what you came with that TBI stuff nobody talked about that before yeah. that was a big deal to me I mean I thought that was very important that's one of the reasons I wanted y'all here I think lawyers are missing those cases way too much because they think it costs too much. But you've got with this test and this brain, is it brain cushion? Yeah, it's braincushion.com. Again, it's an online portal. It is so easy. And I've had so many clients go through that saying, thank you. Finally, somebody validated the reason why I'm having the foggy feeling, why I'm getting so forgetful here. So yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. a huge value driver for your cases. You know, and I was having dinner with a lawyer, one of my masterminds this weekend, actually. And he was saying, he said, the thing I love about your masterminds, Ken, is you've got people grouped in different area, different levels of growth. You've got guys that are doing under two million, two to 10, and those are doing 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever. He said, because we got, you know, if I'm doing a, a half a million dollars and I'm in there with a guy that's doing 30 million, 
I can't do the stuff he's doing. And that guy, I'm wasting his time. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, he's forgot more than I know. So you got to get people, you got to get kind of, you know, and I think that helps too. You want like-minded people and people that are going through the same struggles you are. Because I found that there's certain things at certain levels people are worried about. You know, actually, I did this whole deal. I got a presentation. I called it Five Stages of Law Firm Growth. And it's like, when you just start out, you just want cases, cases, cases. And then, as my mom just say, be careful what you wish for. You start getting them in. But then you got to have the infrastructure and all this. Yeah. Then you, at this point, then you got, you know, you go from a family atmosphere to a more corporate, you know, then you got the, how are you going to scale this out? I mean, because like, how many offices you got down, Gary? You got several offices. We have eight. Eight yeah, see, now. see, but to do that, if you got people in those offices, you want everybody doing it the same way. You got you know, so there's just a lot to it. I mean, you know, it's it's rewarding and, and to me it's fun, but it's not easy. I mean, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it right. But, exactly. Uh, but no, I, I agree. Get into a mastermind, find the right level, but you want to be in a group too where you can aspire to get to the next level and the next level because it yeah. can be done and it will be done. If you do it the, the way that those people are teaching you in that. So be the sponge, absorb the information and put it into practice. I get so tired of people again, getting ready to get ready. Just go do it. Make <laughs> something happen. Yeah, that is the big deal. I mean, you know, taking actions where it's at. I mean, mm-hmm. and then for some, it, I get up and say, you know, you know, 90% of you are not going to do anything with this. You're going to have great ideas. You're going to be pumped up. You go back to your office and then you get busy. And you put it to the side. And I think that's the difference between the really successful lawyers and the ones that are just so-so is they're doers. I mean, they're implementers, they're executors. They actually get, I call it getting shit done. Yeah. Because that is the key. I mean, you ain't got to be the smartest guy in there. I'd rather have somebody do, you can have 20 ideas and get none of them done. I'd rather have one good idea that I can get done. You know what I'm saying? And get it done. Can I get it? You know, we we always said I was the first generation to walk upright in my family, you know? (laughs) <laughs> not <laughs> the brightest uh, bulb out there, but surround yourself with good people. Have that drive to make something happen and do it. Just do it. And that's one great thing about the mastermind groups, especially when you go to these things, you're out of the office. You're able to work on your business instead of in your business. And you got to take the time to do that. Plan, yeah. implement, and put it in yeah. action. And I think it's a little peer pressure too. I mean, I don't really hold anybody's feet to the fire too much, but the deal is, you got to go back in four, three or four months and meet your buddies and your friends. And if you ain't done anything, I mean. There's a little pride that takes over and that's good. Or you can say, hey, I implemented this, but it's not working right. How can I tweak it? What do I need to do? And oftentimes, maybe affirmation or confirmation, you are doing the right thing. Just stay the course. It's going to work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, I appreciate it. And I know you take referrals for people, lawyers out there in Atlanta. And, Happy and, to help. It's just GaryMartinHayes.com. I've been doing it 35 years. And Kim, one thing I'd love to stress here, I've been doing this long enough that I know we're all in competition for the same clients. But if you get that client, I think I have an ethical, moral duty to help you help that client. So if there's anything that I can do to help anybody that's listening to this with a case, with their practice, don't hesitate to reach out. I mean, I am happy to help, especially about brain cushion. That has just been a huge benefit to my clients and, and attorneys need to incorporate it into their practice. You're a scholar and a gentleman. I appreciate it. Very that. kind, my friend. Yeah. All right, my friend. Take care. I appreciate you being here today. You as well. God bless, Ken. Be safe. Right, Look my, forward to seeing right. our next mastermind. You got it, my friend. Okay, until next time, this is Ken Hardison dedicated to your success. You have been listening to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, the podcast that leads lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Go to growyourlawfirm.com to find more ways to market and manage your law firm. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcasts.